Hello, everyone. My name is Mayuri Perkada, and I am an accounting manager for Asset Management Ontario. Data and information management are important foundations for asset management. Data and the information gathered from it are key enablers for strategy and planning, decision making, asset health and performance monitoring, and risk management. The data may be centralized or distributed, but it is important not to underestimate the value of the data and information held within an organization's asset information system. This presentation is about developing an asset register, which is the heart of the asset information system. In today's presentation, the content will be involving connection to the provisional ORAG 58817, asset information system, asset register, asset hierarchy, and then data and information. So this slide shows information on how we connect to the provisional ORAG 58817. Managing data and information is not one of the most exciting topics of asset management, but making the most confident decision starts with having the most accurate facts. Supporting the key requirement of the regulation, like informing on the asset levels of service target, asset condition and performance measure, measurement data, maintenance history, estimated remaining service life, life cycle cost for replacement, all this information is gathered from the asset register. Therefore, it is very important to have a structured asset register to be able to inform on the regulation as well. This does not only help municipalities to achieve those basic requirements, but also goes beyond that to sustain dynamic organizational decision making at all levels of the organization. This slide provides definitions on some of the words that are used within asset management and that are confused. So the first one is the asset management system. The asset management system is basically interrelated elements to establish asset management policy, goals, processes, and to achieve those goals. It is basically an overarching system. Underneath the asset management system, one of the component is the asset information system, which is where all types of information sits, whether it be human resources, policies, strategies, data, technology. So it basically contains all the data or information about all these different things. Asset register is actually a component of an asset information system one of the component, which is basically a centralized source of asset information that exists to support core asset inventory analysis. So it basically includes information on your physical assets. Now to be able to make decisions, this asset register needs to be structured. And to be able to do that, we have asset hierarchy. So asset hierarchy is a key component of the asset register. So this is basically organizing data in a structured form, in a logical groupings, so that way it can be used at any level within the organization. This slide shows information on asset information system. As mentioned earlier, asset information system is a system of policy, strategy, data, technology, processes, and people. Our focus today is on how to structure the assets and asset data in the asset register, and then identifying data needed for asset planning and decision-making. Asset register, as mentioned earlier, this is the heart of asset information system. An asset register is central to an organization's asset management system. It should be the source of the organization's asset data truth. And why is it the source of data truth? Is because any level of the organization that needs information, this asset register would be a one-stop shop for them. Any kind of information they want, it would be from this register. And that's why it's very important to keep updating the asset register as the data updates. So 
as mentioned, there is therefore it is important that the asset register be structured in a way to support the organization's asset decision making needs. This slide basically shows a schematic diagram of all the potential sources of data and information that can populate the asset register. We all know that data sits or gets collected in different systems within the organization. The beauty would be to integrate all these systems. This is where the asset register comes. We want all these systems to integrate and feed into the asset register. So when doing any kind of decision making at any level, it's again a one stop shop, just go to the asset register and get that information data instead of going to CMMS, going to SCADA, going to GIS to pull all this information, it would be just one place to go and gather that information. And that's why it's very important. If there is any changes in the data, we need to make sure that that data is updated in the asset register. Much of the information to support the measuring of asset level of service and life cycles would be coming from these different systems. Asset hierarchy, since asset register is a container for essential asset data, it should be structured by the asset hierarchy. An asset hierarchy is nothing but a method of organizing and viewing asset information in a set of logical groupings and subgroupings. The creation of service to asset hierarchy creates the structure of the asset register and a means to provide a line of sight from the service to the assets that actually provide those services. That's why it's very important to have service to asset hierarchy because you can literally see if the services that are being provided and the assets that actually provide those services. It creates a consistent naming and numbering of conventions. It maps asset relations and creates consistent definitions and data formats. And most of all, it facilitates analysis and decision making at all levels of the organization, whether it be strategic or tactical planning. Here's an example of how or what a service to asset hierarchy looks at. The top of the hierarchy provides the right aggregation of assets for strategic decision making and sustainability planning, while the lower sections of the hierarchy provides the details needed for project planning and life cycle management and costing. Data and information. We all know asset management is data intensive and sound information is derived from the data itself. Therefore, Having complete, accurate data stored in proper format in the asset register is important for confident and accurate decision making. As part of the assessing the data needs, the data should be assessed for accuracy, completeness, and consistency. The timeliness of the data update is also important as using out-of-date information negates the data accuracy. Once the data is collected, it needs to answer all these questions. Once these are answered, this will ensure there is gonna be sustainability and we will be able to provide informed decisions. Similar to the asset hierarchy, there needs to be a line of sight between the data being collected and the decision being made stemming out from this data itself. If the data is not serving any purpose in any asset decision-making, then the value of collecting the data needs to be re-evaluated. Equally important, understanding the value of the data in decision-making will help to ensure appropriate plans are made to collect and maintain that data. Data gap analysis. Performing an asset data gap analysis helps in updating the asset register and also identifying where there is data gaps. If there could be data that is required for decision purposes, but it's missing. So this is where we're gonna identify where is that data missing and how can we collect that data. <clears throat> 